Welcome back to the Minnesota Twins franchise, everybody. Episode 92 here in the month of June. The Twins have started to kind of get this season on track. The offense is looking more like the offense that we saw for the better part of last season. Most importantly, we're getting good production from our most important players, and we have a league average batting average, and we're slightly above average when it comes to home runs. Obviously, what's been holding this team back has been pitching. At the start of the series, it was all about the starting rotation. Now it's the relief pitchers that are letting us down, and the trade to acquire Will Smith has turned into a huge bust this season. But thankfully, we do have a potential answer. Down at AAA this year, Andres Valdez has been very, very good. We saw him a little bit in the previous episode if you watched episode 91. He throws a very good fastball, has a tremendous curveball. His changeup could use some work, so he's kind of a two-pitch pitcher right now. But he was drafted not long ago and has accelerated through the farm system really fast. With the team where it's at currently, I think it's the perfect time to give Valdez his shot on the active roster to make his MLB debut with the Twins. We also send down Will Smith to AAA. The Twins are currently tied for third place in the division, and we're set to take on the Tigers here in this episode. We do start, though, by simming a couple against Cleveland, scoring two big victories. First one, 6-2. I love seeing this. Six runs isn't a ton, but against Corey Kluber, it's really good, and you should get the victory when you get that accomplished. Mike fulton scores the win in that game, and then a 9-0 rout as we get home runs from Sano and Buxton, RBIs from a variety of players, and we beat Danny Salazar and got the Jake Diekman in the bullpen. That'll take us to the Motor City, taking on the Detroit Tigers, a team I feel we've spent very little time looking at in this series. They haven't been contending for the division title. They're in desperate need of a new core of players to build around. Justin Verlander is no longer the pitcher he once was. And I tried a new lineup for this game. I gave Yasiel Puig the chance to lead off the game for the first time. Verlander starts with a full count and loses him here on a slider way inside. Nice way to start off the ball game. And then Paul Goldschmidt in the two spot. And Sano and Nelson Cruz. Verlander's control clearly an early issue as he falls behind Goldschmidt. Gets the count full. And the payoff pitch is right down the middle. Hit deep to center. Going way back. This is down for extra bases. He's almost catching up to Puig. Goldie's going three, Puig has to head home, and he's there for the first run of the day. A rare triple for Paul Goldschmidt, but remember, it's not like he's slow. He definitely has slightly above average speed. And a perfectly placed hit gets him three bases. Miguel Sano to follow, 0-1. Don't need to be as patient this time. He lines one the other way to the corner. A nice bounce allows him to get the time to get the second base. Twins off to a hot start in Detroit. One player who has taken a step back this year is Mitch Garver, but it's not enough to be concerning yet. Garver on a cold streak, but this will help out. Line to right, base hit, make it 3-0 Twins against Justin Verlander. Always feels good to start a game like this, and also when you have a young pitcher who's been up and down on the mound, Gary Tadano. About a four and a half ERA, but I'm staying patient. We do have some good pitchers down at AAA, but I want to see if Tadano can turn this around and what happens when he gets a few more starts under his belt. After opening the game with a strikeout, we see one of his main issues here, and that's the control, especially on some of the off-speed and breaking stuff when we're trying to get those strikeouts. Luckily, though, Miguel Cabrera bounces into a very soft 6-4-3 double play to send us to inning number two. Back with the Tiger offense, drilled to deep right field. That is down. And that is the player I thought we were going to have this year. Remember the offseason when I thought we had signed Yanervis Salarte? No, we did not. He's a Tiger and he gets the triple. 
Efren Navarro next. It's grounded to the right side, fielded by Harrison, who airmails the throw all the way back to the backstop. Now, I'm not sure if you caught this in the simulating, but in the previous game against Cleveland, Harrison had two errors. This now his sixth on the year. And to have three so quickly is definitely concerning. It's 3-1 Twins, full count, and the cutter of Tadano. That seems to be his go-to pitch, his best pitch. Top three for Minnesota. I definitely felt good after that first inning. And here's Goldie trying to get more out to center. It's a loud first out. Verlander got his control under control pretty quickly, and now gets lucky there with the line drive to first. And Nelson Cruz, no. I thought maybe we could really get that pitch count up after the first, but Verlander settled things down. Tigers down by two, and there's Tadano going inside. James McCann, what are you doing on that? Here with two away, Jacoby Jones tapped up the middle. Not a problem for Gary Tadano through three, allowing just the one run. Let's head into the fourth with Minnesota. Mitch Garver at the dish. He turns on one. Blast it out to left center field. That is out of here. Solo shot for Garver. It's only number four on the season. Garver showed a lot more pop last year and also had a higher average. Maybe he can still turn it around, but I'm still pretty confident he'll be our catcher for the foreseeable future in this series. I like that he does have above average hitting abilities at the position back to a three run lead and Miguel Cabrera is trying to show off the power he has not gotten worse by the way he's hitting 340 this year but Buxton tracks it down you know I love the ability of Byron Buxton I believe in the potential the defense is as good as it gets look how much ground he's able to cover very few center fielders would have made this play and Buxton made it look easy. And here's me trying to show you just how much ground he covered. He ran about half the outfield on this one hit. And that's a pretty tough spot to get to. Castellanos next. That's hit pretty well to left field right at Charlie Blackman. Two away in the fourth. Solarte to follow down the line and into left. Getting the first two hits of the day for the Tigers. Tootsuit count to Efren Navarro, right side, underneath the glove of Goldie, and that's through. They end up charging Goldschmidt with the error. Kristen Stewart up next, and he hits it softly, and the Tigers cannot add another run. Nice start for Gary Tadano, keeping the pitch count down, and the Tigers mostly off the board. Paul Goldschmidt here in the fifth inning. Another full count off Verlander. And he finds one he likes. Left center and deep. This is gone. Home run for Goldschmidt. Number 14. Well, he's got the hard stuff out of the way if you want to talk cycle. I want to talk about Nelson Cruz. Whoa, off the cleat of Verlander. And there's an awkward ricochet. An infield single for Nelson Cruz. Bet you didn't think you'd see that today. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do a whole lot with it. Jorge Polanco still hitting in the 280s flies out. Bottom five, Gary Tadano. Well-placed curve on the inside corner. And the slider on the outside. This is Tadano, perhaps the best that we've seen. 1-1, one, one. oh, waving at the slider. One and two, poked it into right, can't really do a whole lot with it, just trying to make contact. And Tadano posts another zero on the board. That was it for Justin Verlander, by the way, just the five innings as they go to Shane Green and the bullpen. And here's the first pitch from Shane Green, drilling Mitch Garver after a single and a home run off Verlander. Now, Josh Harrison reaching a fielder's choice, he's going to take second base. So now an RBI opportunity for Charlie Blackman. And what happens to Blackman? Well, he gets hit as well. Shane Green not tossed out of the game. I thought it should be under consideration. Byron Buxton up later. And a strike him out. Throw him out. I guess that's how easy it is to throw him out at third base. I haven't 
tried that in a while. It was a double steal. Seemed like a cool idea at the time. Bottom six, Miguel Cabrera. It got through. Base hit. Tadano looking for the quality start, but Salarte has been a problem for him. A single and a triple already. Now he wants the long ball. Way out. Right field. Puig. No, can't catch it. Bouncing off the wall. But Cabrera had to see if it'd be caught, so it's just the most impressive single you'll see today. Other than Cruz's, of course. With two away, the Tigers again cannot come through. Navarro grounds out. Six solid innings for Tadano. Let's head into the seventh. Yasiel Puig, he's getting better at the plate. We haven't seen necessarily huge home run numbers, but from where he started out to be hitting near 260, really happy with that. Miguel Sano, however, grounds into the 6-4-3 double play to send us bottom seven. Travis Snyder at the plate. Adano already struck him out twice. Pitch count getting up there a little bit, and this is hammered to right off the wall for extra bases. When you have success against the batter who hits under 200 and then he does something like that, you got to start thinking about the end of the day for Tadano. However, at this point, I still wasn't ready for that, but the next single did end up being the last of the day for Gary Tadano. Runners at the corners, and those runners now hand it off to Jake Reed who has not been the same pitcher this season. He was basically an all-star caliber pitcher a year ago, and now the ERA is up about one and a half points. That's no good. 0-1 count, line to right. That's an RBI single. 5-2 twins. Trying to limit the damage. 1-1, one, one, good fastball on the outside. 1-2, got him with the slider. Reed can still get strikeouts. That's not a question. Here's Miguel Cabrera, though, a chance to tie the game. He won't do that, but he'll come close. Into the corner in right. One run scores. Puig gets it back in quickly, perhaps saving another run from being tested. Castellanos, one down. He's in the air to deep right field. Puig has an arm, but that's a little ridiculous. That's out to the warning track. Another run scores, 5-4. We can't take that W from Tadano. Reed gets the pop-up here behind home plate. And the seventh inning is complete. But a nice lead for the Twins. Now just one. As we in the eighth inning turn to the rookie making his debut. It's Andres Valdez, the 23-year-old from Texas. What can he do now at the big league level? We need some help. His first pitch is a strike with the fastball. Second pitch, another strike with that two-seamer. He misses the curveball, trying to get the strikeout. But one, two, corrects the control. Strike three. A 12-6, low one inside. There's your first big league strikeout, Valdez. Hopefully many more on the way. And just one more look. About 10 inches of break on this pitch. Very impressive stuff. Then facing Kristen Stewart lined up the middle. Well hit for a base hit. So the first strikeout, first hit all out of the way for Andres Valdez. Travis Snyder next, and he taps it softly. Got to charge it, though. Polanco to first only has the one play. Two down, but a base hit could tie the game. They call on Tyler Collins off the bench, and we also make a change with Tony Watson coming into the game. Although he has not been good this year against lefties. He has not met expectations. He does get ahead of Collins. Then a 2-2. It's into right field. Down for a base hit. And Stewart's going to try and score. Puig's throw is in time. And he's out. Preserving the Twins lead. And that is why we got Yasiel Puig on this baseball team. I love great defenders, and Puig's arm is second to none. This play is not even close. You don't test Yasiel Puig. The Tigers learned that today. It's a one-run lead for Minnesota. We're looking for a little insurance, though. I didn't have much comfort here, but Buxton cannot find the alley. That was bound to be a triple. 
So a big catch there by Yanerva Salarte. And then in the ninth inning, let's head to closing time. It's Rysel Iglesias. Oh, the slider on the bottom of the zone, perfectly placed. Iglesias is feeling it. Strike three there on Jones. It comes down to Miguel Cabrera having an outstanding year. He puts it on the ground, so nose throw is in time, and the Twins win in Detroit. Five to four, a very fun game. We get off to the hot start and hang on. It was not easy though. The Twins had to get some bullpen help. Valdez came in, got a couple outs, and then the big outfield assist by Yasiel Puig. The W goes to Gary Tadano, his third of the season. And against Detroit the day after, we score another victory, 2-1. Charlie Blackman gets a little banged up. And then we beat Detroit again the next day, 2-1. So this is a glimpse of the pitching improving now for Minnesota with the offense slowing down a little bit. We have Maxwell Fowler having a good start to bring his ERA back into the threes. That's excellent news. Then a home run from Sano helps lift us the next night. Yadier Alvarez gets another W. Valdez goes a full inning this time. Josh Harrison, unfortunately, got a little banged up against his former team, the Pirates, as we split a little two-game interleague series. Here was the 5-1 to one game. We only had five hits. And the uh, production in this game came off of Mike fulton -Nevich. So it's hard to get everybody all on the same page here playing consistently. Only goes four innings. But the next day, it's a whole lot better. We have hits all the way across the board. Looks like Jorge Polanco may have even had a grand slam. He did go yard and had four RBIs. I kind of wish they would show these box scores in a more friendly way. It's just kind of a spreadsheet setup, and I'd like to see maybe a scoring summary or something like that. But the Twins make some progress this episode. We are now just a couple games behind the White Sox. And I wanted to take a look at what they're doing well this year. Their hitters, you know, are pretty good. Anthony Rizzo, that's a great signing for them so far, as was the McCutcheon signing. But it's really the pitching that's making the big difference. They don't have anybody who's just downright struggling this year. Yet they have so many pitchers who are having phenomenal years. And maybe they have a bunch of all-star consideration for their pitching staff. They have the 8th best ERA right now. And that gives them a major edge over us being in the 20s currently. Still though, we're only a couple games back in the standings. And that's with losing a bunch of games to them. Right now, Miguel Sano has the most home runs and our highest average, and he's doing what he did last season. I wanted to see if he could duplicate it. So far, so good. Paul Goldschmidt, his numbers are a bit down this year, and it would be his lowest average in quite some time. Obviously, when you sign veterans, you are having to expect a downswing at some point. Nelson Cruz is also experiencing one. We're just seeing a little less pop this year from last year's home run derby champion. I also wanted to talk about Josh Harrison, who's also 32 and in that range where you start to wonder if they'll slow down. Harrison's numbers this year are down. His ratings are also going down despite good morale. So I'm wondering if that's performance based or what exactly. But the average is down over 20 points, and his fielding percentage is among his career low. He already has six errors this year compared to nine all of last season. With Jorge Polanco and Nick Gordon in this organization, I have started to wonder if moving Josh Harrison in a trade is the best thing for this team. Andres Valdez, by the way. Three innings in, so far so good. We'll see if that can continue. I love the strikeout upside with him, and the morale boost is obviously nice to get him up to an 80 overall. Here are some league leaders. I want to do a better job of showing you what else is going on throughout the league, so if there is some information you want to see, just let me know. Blake Swihart is having an outstanding year, hitting 350 at the catcher position. Miguel Cabrera is still hitting really well. In the National League, Brandon Crawford leads with a 333 average. And Juan Lagares for the Mets, a 31-year-old hitting really well, and I don't think anybody would have expected it given the ratings. 
Nobody has more long balls than Mike Trout this season with 27. Sano is in second place. A lot of familiar faces up toward the top of this list. Will Park is here though at number 14 or with 14 homers. And this is actually Byung Ho Park, who was a twin when this series began. It's just that when you make the move to a new version of the show, when a player is no longer in that game, it changes their name for some reason. In the National League, John Carlos Stanton, 24 home runs, Justin Turner, 22. And remember, the All-Star break is only three weeks out in games, so we could be very close to the halfway point. Dallas Keuchel is likely to make it to the All-Star game. Tyler Duffy is a possibility. Of course, Paul Goldschmidt's going to be there, but there is another young up-and-coming first baseman now in the American League, Garrett Hughes here for the Seattle Mariners. I believe he was drafted early in this series, and now at the bigs, he's been excellent, very good against righties, and he's already been established here in the league for a little bit. Also, at third base, I expect Miguel Sano to be there as well, and maybe even in the home run derby. But that is going to bring us to the end of this Minnesota Twins franchise episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. I've been thinking a lot about the format and how to get more episodes out faster. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave your feedback down below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If this video can get to 1,000 likes, we'll have another episode out on Friday. Thank you all again and have a great day.